You're watching Unrelent Gaming. This is Vegeta, the Prince of all Saiyans. Make sure you subscribe to Unrelent Gaming and push the like button for me. Or else you'll be Hakai. Not Beerus. You know how this works. Make sure you enable all notifications on the channel and watch the entire video all the way through. And don't forget to follow Unrelent Gaming on both Instagram and Twitter. That's enough! On with the video. Now it goes without question that Dragon Ball Super Manga Chapter number 82 is quite possibly one of the most anticipated Dragon Ball Super Manga chapters of recent memory for a multitude of reasons as the entire fandom now is putting into question as to what Goku's next move is going to be, in putting into question if Goku's simply having to stall for time, if Goku is perhaps looking to bring gas on Beerus' planet, if Goku's looking to perhaps bring gas on Broly's planet, as within the next few weeks we are going to have a definitive answer as to what this is going to be, but right now here today we are going to be taking a look at what the community has to say in regards to what everyone believes is going to happen in this upcoming manga chapter which I can promise you this right now with a lot of people being shown having to have a different stance on the overall situation involving Goku and Gas. let's now go on ahead and take a look to see what the entire community had to say in regards to Dragon Ball Super manga chapter number 82. So here we go on my community tab I went on to post a community poll in asking you guys as to what you guys expected to see go down in Dragon Ball Super manga chapter number 82 as I went along and asking with the granola arc slowly reaching its end with Super Saiyan Blue Goku seemingly baiting gas into following him, what do you think we can expect to see go down in Dragon Ball Super manga chapter number 82? Do you think Goku knows exactly what he's doing by keeping gas's attention, or is Goku simply stalling long enough until Granola somehow gets back into battle? Let the world know what you think is going to happen in the next manga chapter in the comment section as the options were option number one, Goku is stalling for time until Granola fully recovers to fight. Option number two, Goku is baiting gas into burning himself out to weaken him later. Later, option number three, Goku is pushing Gas to follow him in order to bring him on Vampa. Option number four, Goku is pushing Gas to follow him in order to bring him to Beerus. And lastly, option number five, Goku is stalling for time in order to use Ultra Instinct again. And with 30,000 people now voting, let's go on ahead now and dive down into the comment section to see what you guys had to say. Beginning with Joshua, I personally like how Alec never needed to become a powerful fighter to become a dangerous villain. I agree because... He's very sneaky and he seems to be very cunning, so I think that's a double plus on his report card, right? Alec instead had used his intelligence, cunning, and manipulation to survive and get his way. In a way, he is like the Disney villain Scar from Lion King. He's not very strong, but he is very smart. Now, this ultimately now begs the question, are they simply going to write him off as being a jobber in the end? Are they going to give Alec in some kind of way a significant role in surviving? We don't know, right? But I think that with Alec being as cool, calm, and collected as he is, it serves a great purpose going forward because this now kind of gets the audience thinking, okay, are you up to something? And if you are, then what exactly are you really up to? You know what I mean? Being that Goku trains with Broly in the new movie, and it takes place years after this arc, I think it nicely wraps up on how he finds Broly after this conflict they train. Well, see, the thing is, we understand that indeed, yes, they will train, and we know that Broly will be on Beerus' planet, so is the Granola arc going to kind of serve as a gateway for Goku and Broly to somehow reconnect? It would only then make sense because I've discussed this exact topic on a previous video in pretty much laying down the foundation as to why this makes the most amount of sense for it to happen because if Goku just ends up bringing gas on Beerus's planet that would be a huge takeaway in my opinion because I think we can all collectively agree that even if gas is the so-called strongest in the universe Beerus could simply just Hakai him and there goes everyone's hard work you know what I mean and I don't want to see that personally because it just it's not Beerus's fight so keep him out of this but if Goku were to somehow bring gas on, you know, Broly's planet, then 
even though with Broly being insignificantly weak by comparison to what Gas is now, does that ultimately mean that just like we've seen before, Broly can simply adapt and get even stronger? Who knows? The possibility is there, but I guess we're going to have to wait and see. I think Goku is going to bring Gohan into this, and it will make sense with how Gohan is the protagonist in the new movie. I strongly disagree, because what is Gohan going to do realistically, right? Nothing against Gohan, but against the so-called strongest in the universe who is bodying everybody including another individual that was shown bodying MUI Goku I'm sorry I don't see Gohan doing anything against gas if that were to be the case but nonetheless also the villain in the new movie seems pretty damn strong so Gohan may help find a weakness for gas okay well this now begs the question what would Gohan be able to see that neither Granola Vegeta or Goku could see during the course of having to battle this guy like you know what I mean it's not because you want to see Gohan just because you want to see him you have to ask yourself what kind of change is Gohan going to offer if this were to be the case and if he were to somehow be inserted in this fight against gas you know what I mean and I don't think that Gohan has any purpose to serve nor could he really offer anything outside of his own power against gas but even then I think that Gas's ultimate weakness and perhaps maybe his downfall either might come through himself or by the hands of Alec. But again, we're going to have to wait and see. JD with the degrees. I choose the second option. However, I think it's a combination of the first two. Goku is aware of the key usage that he is required to use techniques like Hakai, instant transmission, etc. In this case, planet hopping vast exponential distances is taxing on a person who is untrained, agreed. So by using instant transmission to bait gas, he is ironically weakening gas to his level of battle power. I believe that at the end of the chapter, Granola will be healed and we will have a moment with Monaito dying due to healing Orelek and Granola, who is now blind, low on key and in a near death state will awaken ultra instinct my god you are gonna die on that hill aren't you similar to miris's erasure moment with goku in my opinion i don't see that being the case because what sense would it make for monaito to either give his life up in reviving this kid and bringing him back or at least healing him to such an extent and his eyes are no longer functioning you know what i mean i don't see him coming back and being healed up without having to still use his eyes as only then if and only if they want to run in that kind of a narrative and giving him ui yeah i guess because of the wish itself would it make sense but i personally wouldn't agree with this because this would technically make granola the third ultra instinct wielding opponent or at least character in the series and we've only seen two thus far, one of which being Goku, who had trained very hard to earn it, and the second being Moro, who essentially stole it from an angel trainee, you know what I mean? So, it is kind of a slippery slope, because I do think that, yes, Monaito is going to die, and as he should, because by the end of this, I don't think that with our heroes just having to set sail into the distance and saying goodbye without having to suffer some casualties, and I think that if anyone is more deserving of a casualty, or at least having to die off in this arc, it's definitely going to be Monaito. I think that Monaito had served his purpose. There is nothing for Monaito to offer in this arc anymore outside of just being there. So if he's going to give his life up to heal Granola, I think that he should also go as far as to heal the kid's eyes. Because if he doesn't, once again, he just proves to be meaningless in this fight because you're going to try and revive someone and do a half-ass job at that. It just doesn't sit well with me, like, you know what I mean? So, I guess we'll kind of wait and see, but I think that someone's got to go from our hero side, and if I had to vote for somebody, I would probably vote for Monaito. So, Vegeta is going to provide backup to Monaito just in case he's the target of another attack. I could see that, because what the hell is going on with them kind of preserving in not showcasing Ultra Ego, Ultra Instinct, I get it, they're tired, they're beaten, they're bloody, they're battered, but what the hell, you know what I mean? Like, what, why are they, like, you know, refraining from using that? Like, it just doesn't make any sense to me. I think that it would have been so much better to see Ultra Ego Vegeta mastered Ultra Instinct Goku and Granola work together to combat gas. I think that only then could we have seen a unity of some sorts in witnessing all three of them fight against the strongest, but I digress, right? It would be a real eye-opener to see Goku lure gas on Planet Vampa and witness Broly. I agree, because it's been a long time since, you know, Goku's visited Broly, and this would technically be the first time that Broly would be directly engaged within the Dragon Ball Super manga. Now, we've seen Broly in the DBS manga before, but we've never really seen him, you know, do anything outside of the context from Dragon Ball Super Broly, right? So, nonetheless, it could be a good opportunity, but... 
Goku could use this as an opportunity to defeat Gas and train Broly at the same time. I agree. This manga chapter has certainly gotten interesting. I agree. I you see. The thing is, I want to agree with that in saying that they could follow that route, but at the same time, I think that some fuckery is afoot, something's going to happen, and I know that you guys probably have that same feeling, which is why I am so desperate in them not rushing the end for this, because whatever ends up happening with Gas in either Gas defeating himself, or maybe, you know, Elect turns on him, whatever the case may be, I just really hope that they don't rush this, because if they do, it's going to be really, really bad. But I do agree in the fact that they should go to Vampa, or at least if Goku lures him there, it would be interesting to see what Broly would do, not only to fight against Gas, but also to work alongside Goku, you know what I mean? I honestly can see a number of these situations playing out. I mean, to an extent, I can too, but I think the worst one would be Beerus, because that, that's a definite one-shot. Going to Vampa might be a stretch, but I can see Goku maybe tapping into UI for a short period, then maybe when Goku uh, has better control of the fight, he could possibly get him to Beerus' world, oh no, and then they would go to Vampa before Gas starts to overwhelm him again again. See, what would be the point of giving Goku Mastered Ultra Instinct again, only for Gas to kind of overwhelm him and dragging him on to Beerus' planet and then, and then to Vampa? It just seems like a continuous drag, so I would argue to say that if he were to take him somewhere, it should be on Planet Vampa, and the final destination of this entire thing should take place on Planet Sorel, because it ultimately started here, right? So I think that it's only fitting for this entire arc to kind of end there, you know what I mean? I think that Goku and Vegeta will lend some of their energy to Granola, uh, which by the way, I hate how Toyotaru continuously nerfs uh, powerful characters in this arc. I agree, if you guys have seen the patterns, these guys have been nerfed to ho high hell, and it's so disappointing, you know, but it is what it is. And Granola will just have the right amount of power to beat Gas, similar to when Trunks had the right amount of power to slice Merge Zamasu. I agree, because the future Trunks story, although it featured, you know, Vegito and all of these elements of Zeno and stuff, you know, it was still ultimately Trunks' victory. So it's kind of reflective onto that, you know, like I can see a little bit of Trunks in Granola, and it only makes sense for Granola to finally get his revenge by at least offing somebody, right? And I would dare argue to say that Granola should definitely off Elect, that's for sure. But in terms of Gas, I think that what should happen is Gas should get beaten down by MUI Goku, Ultra Ego Vegeta, if possible, two-on-one, one-on-one, whatever the case may be. And then this creates an opportunity for Granola to finally step back in in finishing him off for good. That's just me, some people might agree, some people might disagree, but it is what it is, right? The Granola arc was inspired by the DBZ Bardock special, the Saiyan and Frieza sagas, inspired by Bardock special due to the mention of Bardock and the Saiyans, inspired by the Saiyan arc due to Granola getting the idea that one of the Saiyans named Vegeta invaded his planet just like how Vegeta being the one of the two Saiyans who invaded Earth after the death of Raditz. But the thing was though, Granola really didn't name Vegeta by name, nor did he remember any specific invader outside of Bardock until Monaito had brought him up. So I can see the correlation, but with Vegeta, I don't think it's direct in my opinion. I believe Goku is baiting Gas because of how unbelievably strong he is. I, you know, I can see that, and I definitely think that's the case. Goku's not dumb, but if he doesn't have a plan, then yeah, he's dumb. I don't think trying to recover going to be that simple because Gas would only constantly onto Goku to a point. Man, your spelling is off, brother. I can kind of understand what you're trying to say because even with Granola recovering, what will happen with Gas? If he doesn't burn himself out, and if it's Goku being the only one that's continuously burning himself out, then that's a bad thing, you know? Like, everybody is in a position where they're vulnerable. So my only question then is how come Alec isn't stepping on in to finish off Monaito while he's healing Granola with Gas and Goku being elsewhere, you know what I mean? Vegeta technically can't do anything, so it only makes sense for Alec to kind of step up to do something about it if he wants to, but he's not, which is kind of weird, you know? I feel like Goku's slowly building up to use Ultra Instinct since he knows Granola isn't dead, I agree. Also, Alec might end up killing Monaito if Vegeta doesn't do anything. See, Vegeta is really badly damaged by Berserker Gas from Dragon Ball Super Manga Chapter number 80, I believe. And so that's why he offered Goku the remainder of his energy because he said, hey, 
it's better if one of us at least fights because if both of us ends up dying then that's the end of you know everything essentially right so i think that with vegeta doing something which i think he should he should defend monaito similar to how he defended eska in the moral arc when moral was about to eat eska the namekian right i think that it only then makes sense but if vegeta just just continues to hold on to his stupid arm and just stand there it's gonna be bad because what's the point of doing anything with the character by giving him a new transformation by vowing to make him the strongest if he's just standing there so yeah i want to see vegeta do something to defend granola while he's being you know healed up by monaito but that ultimately now begs the question can he because he's really tired he gave whatever energy he had to goku so can he pull it off you know what i mean the Beerus option would be totally cool, gives us a good level of power that Beerus is at, but I don't see that happening. See, I think that a lot of people do want to see Beerus, but the problem here is I think a lot of us can agree that Beerus would probably just Hakai him, and that would be it. Especially after finding out that, yeah, Gas is now the strongest, maybe this might spark Beerus' interest to say, you know what, it's been a long time, let's scrap, you know, like, let's throw down. It's kind of hard to say, but... If he were to do that, then it's really not about, you know, Vegeta, Goku, or Granola. Then it more or less becomes about Beerus, you know what I mean? So yeah, I agree. Let us see, you know, where Beerus lies, you know, on, on, the, on the measuring standard in terms of power. We have to see where he's at in terms of gaugement because if we don't have an accurate gauge as to where Beerus is, then this whole debate on whether or not he's been surpassed is just going to keep going on and on, you know? I think bringing Lord Beerus, uh, bringing him to Lord Beerus would be too easy for them. I agree. I don't really see Broly coming into this. Beerus uh, still might be the strongest. If he would not, then he would have been there earlier. But I have no doubt that those wishing orbs will most likely be destroyed. The Cerulean Dragon Balls, that depends though. If Monaito dies, then I can see that being the case. But if not, then they could be around. I, I think it all really varies in my opinion. I don't think it's coming to an end just yet, really. Granola put up so much more of a fight and techniques compared to Gas, and beat the crap out of Goku and Vegeta, there's still more to come. See, I want to agree, but the heads over at Shueisha and Toei Animation had confirmed that yeah, and they even put out a trailer to suggest, yeah, guess what? We are now entering the final phases of this arc. This is the big final battle as we, you know, begin to approach the absolute end to where they flip the page and then start a new arc. So again, it's really all about pacing because if they rush the end and it just makes no sense and you can clearly tell that it's just something they threw together, then that's bad. If they take their time, that'll be good. But I, I think it really all varies because yeah, they're in the end phases now, but it's just a matter of kind of questioning when the arc is going to definitively come to an end, you know what I mean? Because of his incredible strength, I believe that Goku is baiting Gas. I don't think trying to recover will be easy because Gas will... Okay, so this was essentially the same comment with Monaito and stuff. Okay, what if Goku brings him to Frieza? That would be wild because Frieza, even though he's indirectly, directly involved in a sense, imagine Goku just showing up being like, yo, Frieza, and Frieza's like, what the, what are you doing here and who the hell is this? You know, like that would be a bloodbath. I feel like that would make much more sense considering what we know for this arc. Yeah, but what would Frieza do? You know, like Frieza versus Gas? Gas would slap Frieza off of his ship, you know? Like, that doesn't make any sense. I think that if you want to, you know, have Frieza be a thing, save him until the very, very end, and then I guess from there you can kind of figure something out, you know what I mean? But by the end of all of this, I do want to get your thoughts in the comment section below because clearly enough, a lot of you guys have so many different opinions and viewpoints on this some of you guys agree with broly some of you guys agree with beerus some of you guys think that maybe goku's going to reactivate ultra instinct let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below again tune back in for more because on march 20th is when we're going to be having the entirety of the manga chapter covered in english so make sure you guys are hitting that subscribe button turn on all notifications give this video a big fat thumbs up right now by slapping that like button down below if you guys are excited and hyped to see how this is going to unfold because I have a good feeling about this upcoming chapter, I just really hope that they don't end up butchering it by rushing it, you know what I mean? So, I appreciate you guys for your time, thank you all so much for being here, and I'll be seeing you all down in the comment section below and in the next video. Take it easy guys, and have a great day.
peace. This is the Galactic Emperor of the Universe, and of course I'm here to tell you to subscribe to Unrelent Gaming. Also follow Unrelent Gaming on these social media platforms to stay connected at all times. And if you don't, then very soon you will all be dead. <laughs> oh, did someone say Unrelent Gaming? Oh my god. The fuck's up, on? Put on some clothes! Well, why don't you put on any clothes? What? I don't need clothes! But, uh, Jesus Christ, that's huge! <laughs> what, Broly? Freezer. Uh-oh. Prepare to die! <laughs> <laughs> that I'm the biggest Unreal Engine gaming fan. This is my moment. I'm a part of his notification squad. Universe 7 can have all the fun. I just want the food. And don't forget to leave a comment on this video. Show some love for the best community on YouTube. <laughs> K -k -k -k